Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Morning, Melbourne. You were in the midst of royalty. Uh, obviously, radio and comedy royalty, Dave O'Neill. Mm. But also yesterday, very exciting I'm announcement. I'm not paying someone $14 million, though. No. Oh, is that the undisclosed settlement, Whoa, is it? Oh, was that $14 million, million wasn't from it? Prince Andrew. Yeah. Wow. But he wow. didn't know her. That's the crazy thing. Man, no, he's never not, even he's, met her. So and he can't sweat. Yeah. And also, he was at Pizza Express. <laughs> wow. wow. It seems to be a lot of money for someone that wasn't even there. Expensive pizza. Um, but back to my original Sorry. train of thought. We're yes. in the presence of royalty, and it's not you, Dave O'Neill. Oh. It's me. It's you, yes. Dino. Because yesterday, a big announcement in this fair city, the king of Moomba is Peter Hitchener. And as we know, Peter Hitchener oh, is Dino's dad. Which? Which makes you the Prince of the Moomba. Prince of Moomba. <laughs> At some point, we're going to have to find a crown here for you. I was going to bring in my old Moomba queen uh, They give you a crown. crown. Yeah. Mate, you should see it. It's wicked. It's magnificent, and I just forgot it. I apologise. But we'll find some sort of fancy headdress for you as the Prince of Moomba. Yeah, thank you very much. We need much. you to go on one knee and then Hitch have a sword and do that yes. thing where they bequeath you or Absolutely. whatever. Absolutely. Well, I bequeath you. Hitch is on today, but I might go visit him later today just to hang out and discuss how we're going to tackle the uh, campaign. <laughs> Absolutely. But also, if something happens to him, yeah. oh, you're like yes. Prince Charles. You're yes. next in line. Hey, and we hope nothing does, but if it does... <laughs> but if it does, it does you've got to be ready. You've got to be ready. You've got to be ready. Yes, the beautiful Peter Hitchin is going to be in here in person before the end of the show. Can't wait. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Ready to hit the road this summer? It's time to What If It. Visit whatif.com to plan and book your accommodation, flights, activities, even car hire. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable. Booking cancellation windows apply. What If. It's Aussie for travel. Check government advisories before booking and travel. No, it's exciting. We've so loved it, Dave. It's been good fun and even my wife said, sounds like you're having fun in there, which is good. Um, I love how... Is that true? Is that a true, true summation? It's Great. true. It's true. Great, Dave. Um, Great. Yeah. Job I, done. I, I met a magic fairy. That's one of David Strasman's routines. Because oh, yeah. I support him so much, I knew a lot of the routines off by heart. It's true. It's true. I met a magic fairy. That's what Chucky used to say. Did David anyway. Strasman ever get drunk uh, oh. after shows with the puppets? Yeah, the puppets. One day I walked into the dressing room. And Chucky was just sitting on the suitcase, and he and he looked up and went, "Hey, Dave!" I'm like, "Oh my god!" Oh my god! Because <laughs> he could cool. troll him through robot robotic <laughs> thing. Hey, Dave! I'm like, oh, don't, don't don't make the puppet come alive. But I'm <laughs> suddenly I like David Strassman. <laughs> so, hey, Dave! Yeah. Um, I, I was doing the Grandview last night. My regular comedy night has returned to the Grandview in Fairfield. We had Randy Felface, the purple puppet. Mm-hmm. Awesome. He was awesome. Anyway, um, I asked a couple down the front how they met. I love I love how people met stories. I do too. And he was a DJ at a 21st. Oh, Thought of you. God. You were a Moby DJ. I was a mobile DJ, yes. Right. I, I started, never picked up, though. Never. Uh, oh, Did you try? try? No. Oh, I don't know how to do that sort of thing. Yeah, and, and for the man, it was more a traditional role, wasn't it, the yes. uh, DJ? And I, as I said to him, <clears throat> only time for one more song, mate, one more song. You know that you used to do that and you, yeah, you yeah. beg people. No, only one more song. I've got to pack up my stuff and go home. Come on, guys. Come yeah. on, guys. Uh, <laughs> You've only booked me till 11. <laughs> <laughs> no more requests. No more requests. Uh, any, anyway, yeah, so she was at the 21st and he was the DJ. And and I, then I said, I was telling Kieran when I went home, and I said, because remember how we met, you know, we met in the body shop. So really? she was working in the body shop. I went down all the shops, Dino, you know, in Burke Street Mall, the reject shop that yep. lived that lived up to its name. <laughs> <laughs> reject. Um, so your wife was working at the body shop, and you went in shop. there to buy some dewberry, some dewberry soap, yeah, <laughs> or some uh, yeah yeah some you know some blueberry hair gel. What were you in there to buy? No, what happened was that I was at uni, and one of the girls at uni worked at the body shop, and she said you should come and check out this girl. I reckon you'd like her. So really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so wow. that's that's what happened. Dave, you dirty oh. dog. And how did you approach this situation? No, I just kept going back in. Oh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> See, that guy's got a lot of Jewberry soap. <laughs> and then what happened? Did you ask her out? Uh, yeah, we were... I'd see her at parties and stuff because it was all similar. Yeah, then yeah, then we started going out. That's lovely. But yeah. I, I, I did. I didn't say this to her. But the girl that I went out with in the eighties, we had the best eighties meeting story. Well, not the best. It's just a very eighties thing. Yeah. So what happened? I was living in a shared house in Collingwood. Oh, Dad, did you live in Collingwood? Were you rich? Yeah, whatever. And uh, <laughs> believe it or not, Collingwood used to be a dump. I can't and, believe that. <laughs> my ex used yeah. to live in East Melbourne. Oh yeah, yeah. We, li- we lived in East Melbourne in too, a but- giant in a huge. Mansion share house. Oh, was... we lived in one of them. Yeah, I reckon I know the one. Your was it really big? Yeah. Yes, massive. Yeah, we met those guys and hung out with them. What? Anyway, so so anyway, 
a guy we live with called Noddy, he was the only one who had a job, right? Noddy. Noddy. We all went to the same high school uh, and Catholic school. We all just moved in together. And uh, he got a credit card, which was very, in 1986. Well done, Noddy. A credit card. He got a visa card. Noddy's obviously. He was working in the hospitals in Orderly. He's very fancy. Yeah, so he's like, I got a credit card. And then he has a few beers after work. He's like, I will shout you guys dinner if you can find a restaurant that takes this credit card. Because that was very unusual. Yeah, it would have been a bank card. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I got or a at, diner's uh, club. Yeah, yeah. So I got at the Yellow Pages. That's like, oh my how do we explain gosh. that? To, that's like how fa- do you? Facebook Marketplace in a book form. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was. And I went through restaurants and I rang them up. Do you take um, do you take Diners Club? No. Do you take Diners Club? No. The only one we could find was Island Trader, which was a restaurant in Burwood. Yeah. Which became Smorgies. Yes. It was an all you can eat. Lots ho- of lots of tickies. Yeah, Hawaiian. Hawaiian themed restaurant. Gotcha. Yeah, and in the end, they had a donut machine. Yeah, and they also had a, a volcano tiki thing that would talk to you when you walk in. Correct. Cool. Hello, yeah. and it's a try the potato salad. Oh, and now it's you know as usual, all the great things are just apartments. It's apartments. Doesn't exist Damn anymore. It. Anyway, so we rock it. We drove out there in my Tirana. We all four of us. Guys. God, that's a long way to go from hey, Collingwood to Burwood. Yeah, for a, for a free meal on the on the diners on the, the yeah, diners club. <laughs> anyway, the waitress had welcomed us, and so the girls wore grass skirts and bikini tops. Yes. What? Yeah, they did. Yeah, that's right. This good happened. Good old days. This yeah, happened. And, and a flower in the hair, like Polynesian. Fabulous. Like, yeah. She was gorgeous. This girl, yeah. and so I started talking to her. And then, and and then we we finished our meal and she was waiting to, for the bus and, and I pulled up in my Tirana. I said, "Do you want to lift home?" She's like, "Oh yeah, okay." He said, "Come on, jump, jump in, in my car." car. <laughs> and we started going out. So. That wow. is a great story. So how did it end? Did it end badly? Yeah, I can't remember. Oh, oh no. no! Well, at least you remember sorry. how it began. Yes, exactly. That'd be a great phone topic. We'll have to write that down and do it in your absence. Yes, Dave yes. O'Neill, how you met? It is a great, great conversation to have. How people yeah. met. This is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. Now let's cross live to Ash Gardner to tell us the name of the segment. Is it a headline or not a headline? Thank you, Ash. Back to you, Chrissy Swan. Yes, indeed. Hollywood Jack has uh, been sourcing headlines and he's made up a few as well. Oh. Your job, Sam, from Montalbert North, if you are up for it, is to choose which one is a headline and which one is just made up, a.k.a. not a headline. Are you ready? Oh, hopefully, yes. <laughs> That's right. a very specific suburb, Montalbert North, isn't it? Oh, yes. it's real close to Baldwin. Yes. Ah, oh, you know that, Chrissy. You know that, Chrissy. Yes, I do. Yeah. I do. I've I've walked the streets of Montalbert North. It's very lovely. Are there shops? Is there a row of shops in Montalbert North? There is a small group of shops, isn't there, Sam? Yep, there's a real small group of shops and lots of trees. Yep. Lots you of trees. You heard it here, guys. There's shops. All right, nice. Sam, are you ready? Yes. Is this a headline or has Jack made it up? <laughs> Lizzo reveals she has a coochie piercing and would love to do Playboy. Lizzo reveals she has a coochie piercing and would love to do Playboy. I'm going to go with headline. Yes, Sam. Come on, Sam. And Sam, I think you just revealed your New Zealand origins. Yes, I am. Yes. Yes. Uh, Because uh, you said uh, headline. I love Kiwis. (laughs) Hey, you've already won something, a double pass to see Jackass Forever, which is good. Okay. It's in cinemas now, but let's get you five prizes maybe. Is this a headline or not a headline? Katy Perry offers a glimpse into her sex life as she compares fiancé Orlando Bloom to a wild stallion who can't be tamed. Oh, gosh. I'm going to go with not a headline. Sadly, Sam, that is a headline. What? Katy spoke about her relationship on the Kyle and Jackie O show, comparing her British Bow 45 to a wild stallion. We've seen his pizzle. Yeah. <laughs> Live makes, and loud. He makes Orlando Bloom. Greg Norman look like a toddler, sadly. Absolutely. All right, Sam, headline or not a headline, Kylie Minogue plans on opening play centre called Minogue Madness upon her return to Melbourne. What? She's just bought an $8 million house. Damn it. What? She is moving back to Melbourne. Is she going to open a play centre called Minogue Madness? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with not a headline. Correct, Sam. Oh, what has she won? 
She's won a fantastic thing of donuts and cookies from Mrs. Fields. Oh, the best. It's a prize pack. It's 100 biscuits and a $100 gift card. Mrs. Fields, the world's best chocolatey cookies and more. Made in Sydney. Headline or not a headline, Sam, we're running out of time. Local resident confused Alec Baldwin for a hobo when he visited their town. Is that a headline or not a headline? (laughs) I'm going to go with headline. Yes! You are correct. Screw. Alec was shooting his upcoming movie, 97 Minutes, in the UK countryside when a local made the observation. Carolyn Benham told Daily Mail that she confused the actor for a rambling obo walking oh, down oh. the street. $200 <laughs> make-out meal voucher. Make-out meals delivers meal kits with recipes by top restaurants. That's Ooh. one less night that you have to go to the shops. Woo! Yes. Headline or not a headline, Hayley Bieber shocks followers with homemade body moisturiser consisting of butter, Chili and lubricant. <gasps> mm. Headline. Not a headline, Sam. Uh, Damn it, Sam. But you've still got your arms full of amazing prizes and you've spoken to us. 50K Friday. <laughs> Means you can be Thank rich tomorrow, so Sammy. Say something, uh, fish and chips and some real cereal. Nil Finn, Tim Finn. Yeah, can you say the <laughs> Finn brothers' names? <laughs> Well, what about Chili Ben? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. All right, here's your chance to win a, uh, a bonanza of prizes mm-hmm. before the weekend when you tell us your story of the most epic family fight okay. that oh, you've ever seen. Christmas time. Or been in. Obviously, most of the time they involve booze. Mm-hmm. And there's extra points if one or more members of the family are naked. Because um, when, yes. uh, when said argument is happening. So 13, 20, 14, get on the line now with your most epic family fight. And ones that have been simmering for a long time. Yes. Okay. That are based in childhood. And, the, and they absolutely, and then they blow up spectacularly mm. because you've all shut up for so long and it's simmered away. Yeah. And boom. And it's fractured the relationship and it may be irreparable. It's absolutely yeah. irreparable is, is what you're trying to say. Can't be repaired. The inspiration for this is that a drunk brawl has broken out between two naked sisters at Disney World. Yes. I'll say that again. Disney World. A drunk brawl has broken out between two naked sisters at Disney World. If yes. you've got even 5% of an imagination, you can see exactly what this looks this this would have looked like. They're at they're there. They're in their late 20s and early 30s, 29 and 31. And they're ready to go back to their hotel off the resort property when their phone died. That had too much drink to drink. And while they were waiting, the pair began arguing. Mm-hmm. Things from their past came up. Oh. The older sister called oh. the younger sister a bad mother and slapped her. Oh. That is, you should never say that to anyone. You're a bad mother. Never, ever you say that. You're a bad mum. Hey, Swanee, that's out there and it can never be taken back. It can back. never be taken back. You never forget that. Oh. And then the younger sister allegedly threatened to punch her older sister. Eventually, they ran at each other. The older one slipped in the younger sister's vomit and then fell into the bushes while still fighting. Yes. And when did they get nude? Thank you for asking. According to the security guard, the younger sister then ran a few feet away and took off her dress, exposing her breasts. Did you ever watch Jerry Springer? I was obsessed yeah. with Jerry, Jerry. Springer. Yeah. And I was always surprised, and I wondered if this is a, like a cultural thing, American thing, or whether it's what happens. Mm. Whenever they started to fight, someone would take off a piece of clothing. They would throw their shoes off and take off a piece of clothing, sort of as a as a as a, a sign, a visual sign that that shit was going to go down. Really? Yeah, well, men take their shirt off. Why? Maybe to protect it getting ripped. Yeah, yeah. I reckon. Yeah, yeah. And maybe jewelry? Do they take the jewelry off or no? I don't remember the jewelry, think... but I remember men and women taking off at least one piece of clothing. I know, as a youth, if you were well built and you took your shirt off. Before a fight, you'd scare people because yeah. you know, like, right, you know, tough guy, tough guys. What would you? What would your message to the world be if you took your <laughs> shirt off? Don't hurt me. Yes. Yeah, so, well, there's a lot of lot of a lot of comfort padding there. Look at that guy. My <laughs> punches aren't going to hurt him. So they ran at each other. She took her dress off, and then they began to punch each other again at Disney World. Right near the Little Mermaid ride, so to the soundtrack of this. We got no troubles. Yeah. Beating the piss yeah. out of each other. Rolling around in the bushes <laughs> naked and drunk. It's a small world. One of the most <laughs> epic, because there's, there's no one that you hate yeah. more in, in, the, uh, in the heat of an argument than your brother or sister oh, yeah. at home. And it can be the, the smallest thing. Mm. Like, I remember, I think my sister didn't want me in her room. Like that. Yeah, that the classic. Very, very basic. And in the end... 
she ended up on the ground with her feet up, kicking me from below. Like, that is a low move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I can't compete with that. I've only got my hands. I don't yeah. have my feet. And Coward. Legs are stronger. So she did that move, got down on the ground, kicked me. How'd you counter it? Like a horse it? kick. Oh, I ran away. Damn it. I knew I was beat at that point. <sighs> when my sister got down on the ground, that was it. It was all over. Yeah. It was all over. I, I had two older brothers who picked on us, me and my twin. Did they beat you? Yeah, apparently I can't remember a lot of bashings, but I do remember the occasional punch. Yes. One day when my brother Trev was studying for HSC. Trev. Trev. And Trev, you know, he got into law at my age. He was pretty smart. And like, he was really serious with his studies. Oh, he doesn't me, like Trev. I no. can me, feel. Me, me, me and Noddy and Glenn, my brother, we made like a... a Noddy B, again. A, yeah, a BMX jump into a Clark rubber pool. And we're having a great time outside, jumping our BMXs into the pool. Wow. Trip, like, Guys, I'm trying to study. I'm going to be like a doctor or a lawyer one day. Was <laughs> Joyce going, don't tear the liner. <laughs> Joyce don't wasn't tear home. the liner with the BMX bike. This was stuff we did when Joyce wasn't home. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. Oh, one time, Noddy got on the garage roof and rode his BMX off the garage roof into the pool. Noddy. Oh, it's great. Noddy. But he came good later with the credit card and the island yeah, trader exactly. free fee. <laughs> so did you and your brother fight after he came out and interrupted this? Yeah, he hit us, I think. I'm pretty sure he whacked us, yeah. for sure. 13, 24, 10. Most epic family fights. We've got so many prizes and your chance to win 50K. D from Geelong, what is your epic family fight? Hi, um, me and my sister never got along as a uh, little little kids and I remember this one particular day that she broke my favourite bluebird whistle that I used to have hidden in my room. Oh. Um, anyway, it just <laughs> escalated to the point where she ended up chasing me around the kitchen table with a knife. Yes. Um, my mum was outside hanging clothes on the line. It was only because she walked in and <laughs> obviously broke it up and then we both grounded. Absolutely. No one was stabbed, which so is a, good. A, a bluebird whistle was broken and a knife fight ensued. <laughs> that can only happen under the same so family roof. Breaking the whistle, that would have been a precious toy at that age. Why? Yes. She yeah. knew what she was doing. Double pass to a Melbourne Fashion Festival show and after party, PayPal Melbourne Fashion Festival, celebrating fashion, arts and ideas. Tickets at paypal.mff.com.au. Nice one, D. Marley from Deer Park. There was nudity. There certainly was. Tell us everything. Uh, a couple, a few years ago, well, actually a while ago, two of my brothers uh, were fighting. They were very drunk. Uh, one of them ended up with blood all over them, so ended up having a shower. <laughs> uh, got out of the shower completely naked, didn't dry himself, continued on with the fight, and then the uh, naked brother... Uh, broke the older brother's jaw. Oh, oh that's dear. a big punch. Okay, so is that against yeah. the law? Like, is that assault? Yeah. This was, you know, going on about 15 years ago or something. And so. are they friends now? Uh, they're not the closest, no. No, every time he clicks his jaw, he thinks... He's, he's remember, brother. he's reminded. <laughs> so in the yeah. shower, he was just sitting there going, I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to yeah. break his damn jaw. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess so. Nice well, you're off to hey, Melbourne. We're not happy. You're off mm. to the Melbourne Fashion Festival, friend, and an after party. PayPal Melbourne Fashion Festival, celebrating fashion, arts, and ideas. Tickets at paypal.mff.com.au. We're all in the youngest, uh, the youngest club. We're the babies of the we family. Are. And can I tell you, you will agree with me. There is nothing more terrifying than an older sibling who wants to kill you. Yes, it's real. It is so real. <laughs> Absolutely. Brownie, the podcast. Well, good morning to you, Melbourne. And as the sun rises in this fair city, we welcome Sam Pang as we do always at this time. Good morning, Swanee, Dino, Yo. Dave. We also Sam. have a. I just wanted to acknowledge that we are in the midst of royalty, and I'm not talking about Dave O'Neill, who is obviously radio and comedy royalty in this sure. city. Well, if he's you the, say. He's the king for me. Well, the king, the actual king, is Peter Hitchener. He was, uh, it was announced yesterday that he's the king of Moober along with Fifi Box, his Jeez. fellow monarch. But as we all know, Dino is Peter Hitchener's son. All and right. that makes him the Prince of Melbourne. The prince. <laughs> and that means if anything happens to Hitch, yeah. Dino's oh, got to step yeah. in. By law, right? I'm going to step up to the big seat. That's, that's, yeah, that's uh, right. Who are you modelling yourself on? Prince Andrew, Prince Charles? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, just myself. I'm a rogue prince that goes his own way. Well, just prince. Mate, if, the, if, the so musician. Hitch, when is Moomba Swanee? 
Um, March 24, right, 11. So he March have, 11. He is. He doesn't have that long to, you know, hold on. He, Please you know be. I mean? He'll probably make it. Well, there's a new tradition with the monarchs. They actually, it started with my king of Moomba, Jimmy Giggle, who launched himself into the Yarra, first monarch ever in the Birdman Rally. Obviously, Peter Hitch and He's not going to do that. We, he wouldn't do that, but maybe he'll send his son. Oh, the Birdman oh Rally. God, you can do the Birdman Rally this year out of respect for, you, for the king. Mm. I'm not ruling it out. Absolutely not. Is there room on the float for us if I just sit down the front? Yes. <laughs> yeah, just sit cross- At the feet of yeah, the just, king. Yeah, cross-legged. Okay. Oh, no, on his what? lap, on daddy's lap. What car do you drive in? A Swift, man. Man, Four if I door. see footage of a Swift running hitch over, I know what happened. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. This is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. It's Chrissy Sam and Brownie on Nova 100. I've got a story here that I found during our little break, Swanee, but I've, and I've been meaning to bring it to you. Great. Because um, is it worth the wait? Oh no, I it won't be. It of course, oh, no, no, it won't okay. be. No, no, no. no. It's 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 um it's from your neck of the woods. It's Saudi Arabia, Dave. And, uh, Big fan of the prince. The king. Well, this is the King Abdulaziz Camel Festival, which was on. Awesome. Uh, yeah, no, uh, on late. Man's uh, on a camel. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> whatever that means. Yeah, just say whatever comes to mind. Yeah. And don't worry about if it's helping me or not. <laughs> 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 no, anyway, it was on last year, last month. And by the way, the, the results are the camel camel festival. Swanee, it was uh, steeped in controversy because there's a camel beauty contest. It's not running of the camels. These are beauty, it's a beauty contest with camels. Oh. Camels? Absolutely. They are so pretty. Have well, you really looked at a camel's face? They've got really? these big eyes and long they're eyelashes. Not, not. It's funny you mentioned that, Swanee, because it was the, 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 it involves the Al Magatia um, breed. It's a famous breed. Mm. You say that they're beautiful. They're pretty. Yeah, well, yeah. it's been rocked by a, by a scandal. The uh, Saudi authorities have had to crack down on Cosmetically enhanced camels. Really? Oh, what? Yeah. oh my god! Owners are, owners are getting in there, <gasps> right? So you're allowed to, you know, the, the handlers are allowed to fluff the tails and oil the coats and you know gloss the lashes, like you said, they're beautiful. Beautiful. Up close. There's been there's been surgery, Botox injections, oh. facelifts, oh, and, no. other, and other cosmetic alterations <laughs> to make the camels, camels more attractive. <laughs> They've cracked down. A dozen camels got thrown out of the competition, though. Whoa. Really? Could have been under Brighton. Could have been. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine the disgruntled dressing room? Like, going, oh my god, this is shut <laughs> up. The oh. lips aren't even real. What then you've run out of Botox. Did 20. you just say, Bobo? Bobo. That's what you call. It's funny. They, Botox? This year, authorities dis- that, that I had to um, uh, disqualify dozens of, of camels. Because they'd found that the owners had stretched out the lips and noses of the camels. They'd used hormones to boost the beast's muscles. They'd injected the heads and lips with Botox to make them bigger. Sorry, Bobo. To make, Bobo. Them, to make them bigger. And then inflated body parts with rubber bands and used fillers to relax their faces. Wow. God. Yeah. Some of the camels have gone on to re- uh, to uh, release a range of cosmetics and a line of fitness wear. <laughs> but uh, they only caught them because the camels Instagram the whole thing. This is a big thing. This is a big thing, Swanee. Um, but... Uh, if you want to see them in live, if you yeah. want to see these well, camels live, just go to the botanical gardens. They're doing the tan at about 11 o'clock. Yes. They're doing laps. Yeah. <laughs> want to see what happens in the studio? Check it out on Facebook. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Good morning, Melbourne. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Over 100. Sadly, it's a, it's the last day Dave's here for uh, filling in Yeah, but Brownie. Brownie returns, so that's good news. Yes, he makes his triumphant return tomorrow. We're going to ask him all the questions about the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. I thought he was all right. Is but he he'd un- already returned. He did his podcast he, yesterday. He, uh, that son of what. a bitch came to work yesterday and he's not here today. And he's not here today. Oh, he's in bed, recovering. I think, I've, I think there is a rumour that he came back wrapped in an American flag. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> he didn't sound very good. No. Hey, it's time for this. Stump. Chrissy. Oh, I oh, forgot this. So do, you know, do you know this Have concept? you played this before? Never been here for this one. Oh, so what happens, we, we figure that Chrissy, we worked out that Chrissy's a freak when it comes to picking songs from the In 80s. The sheets. Yeah, yeah, and she just gets it. <laughs> oh. She just gets it like this within 10 seconds of hearing the opening riff. Okay, but then we found Deb from Bandura, who's also a freak when it comes to guessing songs within the first five seconds. I definitely haven't been there for this. Oh, so, yeah. So it's like a great, it's a great pairing. It's a great mashup, man. Yeah, hi, Deb. Good morning, everyone. How are we? Are you feeling fresh? I am feeling very good. We haven't gone head to head for a very long time, Deb. It's been too long, Chrissy. I have mm. been missing it. Cool. Well, you're back, Deb. And let's just 
Also, Deb, we got to check your buzzer before we start playing, if possible. Oh, there we go. A, that's a good. That's quick. Deb, she's good. Deb, she's got the advantage there. All yes. right, how's yours? Because <laughs> your. Whoa. Oh, oh, that's Deb. good. All right, let's go. <laughs> Song one, Dino. Round one. Deb, quick. Oh, Deb. Deb, what's that? Was that Tommy Two Tone eight six seven five three zero nine? Oh, you freak! It is. Number six seven five three zero nine. Sam, you got to sing along, dude. What are you, a party killer? Jeez, go to the kitchen no, and get a drink. that's you. <laughs> that's can you. I, you of any party I've ever been to, you have get a killed. Drink. So don't can worry. I tell you, this is twice in one week that song has come up. Because really? You know how I do my walking treasures, Deb? You follow me on Instagram, yeah. don't you? I do indeed. Yeah, and I took a photo of a of a unit block with the numbers 8675. Oh, awesome. And, oh of course, God. all day I was singing that exact song, and then yeah. here it comes. I can't sing along if I don't know the words, but party killer. You, you don't know Eight six seven five three zero nine. That song from I do not know nine eighty two. New nickname for you, Killer. <laughs> it was a great one. Remember, there was controversy when they came out because that, of course, someone in Melbourne had that phone number. Yeah, and it was on current yeah. affair. Had an old lady singing at a house, <laughs> <laughs> and the phone kept ringing. <laughs> do, I, no, do not ring me. Don't ring me. Gladys from Vermont. <laughs> Eight six seven five three zero nine. Okay, let's stay in nine eighty two. This is a classic. Deb. Go on, Deb. Oh. Devo, the girl you want? Oh. Jesus. Deb, she's whipping my did Deb, ass did Deb, today. Did Deb send these in to you and then you just <laughs> organise them? No. This is my wheelhouse, Sam. It is the, the joys of watching so many years of Countdown. Yeah, oh, of course. You remember Deb. that song, wouldn't you, Sam? No. She sits on top of a greenhouse tree. No. It's just a girl. Oh. You remember Devo with the hats? That's oh, yeah, he knows Whip it, Devo. Whip it good. Your you version. Your version's not helping me either, by the way. <laughs> All right, so Deb's two. How, how long does this go? Because oh, Deb is. We're going to play Deb this till nine. Why don't go to the kitchen and get a, get a drink? Deb's right. killing me here. They're here we just go. Not, they're not, not mine. Not, not, not a couple of mine. Oh, this might Switch be. on, Swanee. This, 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 is, this is an Aussie one, I think. Crap, Chrissy. Oh, no, no, don't know it. Whoa. Oh, keep going. I thought it was Haircut 100. <laughs> no, it's strange. That's what I thought, too. I the, was going to say Haircut 100. The, yeah. the, this was their second hit, this band. You would have loved their first single, Chrissy. No, their first. The guy called Roger, lead singer. Oh, that's right. A young heart? Yes. Little Heroes? Oh, yeah. my God. Little Heroes. Oh, I God. love Little Heroes, I but I've never heard songs. that song. This is good. Well, yeah. I think I'm um, happy. Have you got the chorus, Dino? No. I must no. be Why happy. would you have the chorus, mate? Why would they have the chorus? Yeah. Yeah. Heart is never sorry. Yeah. Okay. I've never cool. heard that. Yeah, yeah, that was a hit. That was that went to number forty two. Okay, not a big one. <laughs> um, the mate. same band for um, perfect one perfect, one perfect day. day. One perfect day one is perfect? a great song. Jeez, but I, I, don't my, know I thought my camel break was bad. <laughs> <laughs> mate. This, this, what song is this? Is an Aussie song? Eighty eight. Yeah, Mel I know. Band. Um, oh, oh my god. Deb. Hey, go, Deb. New school. New school with the Painters and Dockers. Yeah. 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 Did you know that one, Pang? I, I do not know that one. Did you start this whole thing by saying Chrissy's got a gift? Chrissy's yeah, got a really I special gift. I did not. She's zero before. She has not these even. The count- no, these are my countdown years and my high school years. Yeah, but I don't think you should just pre- you know, re- reframe the whole thing. Deb's got the gift. Deb's so, got the gift. Swanee's just listening. This is not stump. No, no, it no. is called stump Chrissy. All right, and I've been on. stumped by every single one. Let, let's go to America. This is a big hit. Yeah, go on, Deb. Oh, um, oh, words and the the band. Oh mm. shit. Words. Is Sorry, the... she had blonde hair, and I can't think of their name. Yeah, Missing yeah. persons. Oh, Missing persons. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh my god, Deb. Blonde hair and can't think of her name. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> You're a real freak, Deb. As always. You're Candy. a freak, Deb. Hold on. Thank you. Let's just do one I more. It's funny. You, uh, sorry. Can I just say? Have you had a shocker? In a grand final, have you just just not got a kick? This is the equivalent of my MasterChef appearance. <laughs> Choked. Look, Chrissy yeah, is normally a lot better, isn't she, Deb, at this? Yeah, she is oh, so much better. I don't know hard. any of these. Right, one more, then we'll end it. Here we go. Mm-hmm. This is her second single. Oh, my God, Swanee, you're gone again. I should have gone to the ads. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's not too late. Nova. 
Chrissy Swan, Sam Pang, and Jonathan Brown. Chrissy's celebrity star. You an NCIS man, Sam? Not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. Are you a Law and Order guy? I was a dun, rich- dun. Original Law and Order, like a long time, didn't yeah. it? In the first These episode, first season stories. when uh, the great Paul Savino was in it. Oh, yes. Paul Savino. That's going back a long way. God, great it man. is. I'd forgotten that he was even involved. Then in I was that. off. Then I was out. Well, I was, NC- I was in, in my PD Blue Man. Yeah, sure. Sipowitz. You look, you're around uh, a little bit of Sipowitz. I'm all cop shop. Shorts. Yeah, <laughs> cop anyway. Shop. Oh my God. You're, come on, you're Matlock Police. Um, <laughs> NCIS is uh, going to film in Sydney for a spin off version. Um, NCIS colon. Sydney. Right on. Mm. Um, I didn't know this, but the uh, the creator of NCIS Los Angeles is, a, is an Aussie, Shane Brennan. Mm. So what do you think the conversations behind the scenes were that made this NCIS I think, I, I think Shane's wife said, move to Sydney? When are we going back to Australia, Shane? I don't like LA anymore. Amazing? Shane Brennan, Shane Brennan who mm. I don't know, no. would be a is a heavy hitter. If he yes. created NCIS. Los Angeles, yes. Mm. But he like, would he would have written on shows in Australia. He would have started off in a soap opera like yeah. Neighbours, A Home and Away. Of course, he would have done Stingers, Water yeah. Rats, but he's uh, a Mrs. Runner. Fishers. The yeah, show he's a showrunner, and he's he would have gone to America. He's out, he's Australia's version of Dick Wolf. Dick he Wolf, is. Law and Order. <laughs> the These great, are our stories. The great Dick Wolf. It's got three spin-offs: NCIS, based in Los Angeles, New Orleans, and Hawaii, and now Sydney. Yeah, this is a great opportunity for you to get into acting, Sam. I could see you on a boat with some white powder in a thing and. You're throwing it overboard. I'd do that if it was a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> the Pong Su. Remember you the should... Pong Su that, that washed up in lawn? No. <laughs> what, what are you? Your, your, your acting um, yeah. is a, a bit more extensive than mine. What yeah. you, You've actually played. You were played a baddie in Stingers. Brendan West, the drug dealer who died in a hotel room with a prostitute. That's right. Thanks for reminding me. And what and was his, his catchphrase? His last words were? Nice fun bags. <laughs> so typecast. There was another line, but I'm That was that lived. You took hey. that from real life. <laughs> yes. Dave, there's 20 something episodes probably. Surely you can be a baddie in come one on. of these. I know, come on, put me in. I could hey. be a good dodgy sort of guy. Mm. Well, I don't know what that last noise was, by the way. But <laughs> anyway. me, me thinking, me thinking of. Mm. What's this? Not even a word. What's sort of crime, sort of crime <laughs> I was going to do? Mm. <laughs> speaking of which, speaking of crime, what's wrong with you? I saw this on Facebook last night. Pentridge, yeah. they're doing an exhibition, yeah. and they're asking yeah. National Trust Victoria are asking for anyone who has any objects from their time at Pentridge. Any <laughs> <What laughs> objects? So they wanted to donate them so they can put them in their exhibition. And on on the comments, some bloke called Cody Jones goes, "I got a few things." <laughs> 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 From his time at Pentry, what would you have? Oh, we've got to find. We've got a to track file. down Cody Jones and find out what a few things are. I got a few things. Straighten up. The Lord Mayor Sally oh, yeah. Cat is respect. next. A toothbrush sharpens. Good morning, Melbourne. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. Lord Mayor Sally Cap. After that title, it's clearly evident she's the Lord Mayor of Melbourne, and her name is Sally Cap. Enough chat. Here's Sally Cap. You can sit down, Sally Cap, if sure. you like, because no, your microphone's already, flopping. I've already asked. Oh, I do have a flopper. Yes, but the is flop, okay? the microphone is flopping. Brody, fix it, oh, brother. Brody, oh, Sorry, the Fosby flop. Oh, he's just going to hold it the Brody. whole time. Oh my god, you're oh, not going to no. hold god. it the whole, t- no. whole Brody. time. There you go. I tied it. Sorry. <laughs> you need a man. Who's going to do that? This is a good stunt start. This Brody's is, not this usually, is great. usually allowed to thank be that close to important people. No, thank you for coming in, Lord Mayor. He did fix it. Very exciting news yesterday. The Moomba Monarchs. I am pumped for this because I have been Queen former of Moomba. Former royalty. Yes, former royalty. And um, I just want to know, did you get the idea for Peter Hitchener from us? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you did? Oh, well, I don't know. Did you nominate him? Yes, of course. We talked oh, about him so good. Oh, well, you were one of many people, I'm sorry to say, but great to say, that thought that Peter Hitchener would be an awesome Moomba monarch, and he's already started with a plum, I think. He's been on the news last night wearing that magnificent crown of his. Have you still got yours? Of course I do. Oh. I was well, going to bring it in. Yeah, yeah. It's bespoke. It's, it's made bespoke, just yeah. for you. Um, Where do you wear it, as a matter um, of interest? It's in my son's bedroom. And I was supposed to bring it in because you may not know this, but you are in, uh, in you know, very highly esteemed company here. Dino is actually Peter Hitchin's son. We think. We think. 
Long and lost. They've got a close you could lunch. go on the float well, and the yes. Moomba parade. That's what we're saying at the well, at Family members are welcome. Can you just say that one more time? <laughs> <laughs> well, you've done the parade. It's I fun, have. isn't it? It's magical, and there will be a parade back. I think you, as the Prince of Moomba, need to be sitting cross-legged at the feet of your papa. Dress like Lord Fauntleroy, though. Is this allowed? Has anybody asked Peter about this? Hey, Hitch is coming <laughs> in later. He's coming is in he later, good? Lord Mayor, so maybe we'll run it Put past it to him. him while we do have a, a wonderful float uh, that uh, transports the Moomba monarchs through the streets of Melbourne oh, and uh, family members are welcome. Drinks on the float. How was it? How was it a we, long? We <laughs> haven't put an esky on there at this point. Let's but do some there months. are always chances for innovation, there's no doubt. Was it a long list to choose from? Always. I mean, we're really looking for people that are really well connected and engaged with community, oh. that have a great profile, uh, that have uh, real creds about being part uh, of the city. And he's so we're really drinker. pleased that Pitch. He's a big But also, Dino, if they're on the float, he could follow along on one of those e scooters and just go off into the crowd <laughs> at certain points. I really want him to go with the whole Henry VIII vibe of. Of oh. royalty, like just be on the float, gnawing on a lamb leg. Oh, yeah, chicken leg, yeah. You know, awesome. wiping his face down with a giant oversized serviette. Yes. I feel like he could, and if he doesn't, then that's something you could do as the Prince of Moomba. I'm know. the Prince of Moomba, Lord Mayor Sally Cap. <laughs> right. You wish you were back on the ABC right now? <laughs> <laughs> How are normal, the e-scooters going? Normal interview? <laughs> the e-scooters. Uh, the e-scooters are going really well, thank you. First week, uh, more than 60,000 trips. Uh, the two companies that uh, are part of the trial, Lyme and Neuron, say that's equivalent to a Berlin or a Paris that have had these schemes mm. underway for a long time. Really pleased that the... Really pleased, really pleased that, pol- that the police have uh, got involved and they are really coming down on bad behaviour. And let's face it, it's only a few that ever do the yes. wrong thing. Yes. Uh, but most people are doing the right thing and having a great time on the e-scooters. And I can I, tell you personally, they're, they're a lot heavier to throw in the Yarra, unlike the, those, they are. those bikes. The bikes were easy. The old bikes were easy. <laughs> mm, you'd pick them up two it's, at a time. Much hey, greater degree of difficulty. The question, heavy. how do they stay charged? Does someone come along and charge them and put them back on the street? Yes, they do. So yeah. they've employed lots of Melburnians to be out and about making sure that they're in the right spot, that they're fully charged and they're ready to go, fix any tech issues. That's cool. So it's been great for local jobs as well. Speaking of local jobs, are you excited at the rumours today that Dan Andrews is going to announce some uh, changes in restrictions for the CBD? Your arms are up. We are are pumped. It is uh, big news. We can't wait. My fingers are crossed. Rumour has it that um, he's going to be super encouraging of people returning to work in all of those empty buildings in the city. Well, absolutely critical for the city. We've been the hardest hit uh, city around us. Excuse me, around Australia, and it's mostly because 262 days in lockdown and ongoing work from home, if you can, advice. It'd be so fantastic for the city to see all those workers coming back. But I think it's a really big message right across Victoria that it is time to get going again. Yes. And uh, I'm often quoting these days the great modern oracle Taylor Swift. It is time to shake it off, Melbourne. Yes. And let's get going again. Yes. Hey, Lord Mayor Sally Cap, do you want to play a game with us? Hmm. I'm the scared. Yes. It's no, called no, no. Yes. yes. As a public figure of some note, Sally Cap, I'm sure that you found yourself in uh, situations where you turned, walked around and gone, what the hell is going on here? Why am I here? Plenty. Some of them have been uh, really humiliating or right scary. Now. No, no, not at all, not at all. Uh, Others have been completely awesome. I've been lucky in the past to meet the Queen. (gasps) Wow. In Buckingham Palace. Wow. Did you 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 bow, curtsy? Did you? Yeah, I'm I'm good at that. Oh, yeah, good. But you were talking about me for a second. Oh, (laughs) Queen Chrissy. I I did cause a bit of an incident. I was so worried about the curtsy and all of the shaking hands or not that I put my handbag down underneath a, a chair before going in to meet the Queen and I could hear a lot of kerfuffle going on whilst speaking with the Queen and I'd caused a security incident <gasps> by leaving an unattended bag in Buckingham Palace. Sally so, Bogan. Uh, oh, probably a bit of that, really an Aussie Bogan. Uh, but it was an abs- I, I remember it distinctly thinking, 
Wow, what am I doing Was it here? This surreal? is thrilling. To, She's to see incredibly her? impressive. What person. did she smell like? Oh. That's that's an interesting question. It's not in my memory. Oh, the smell. I, could I say corgi? Gambling? Uh, oh, you could. Could I say no? Everything Sadness, about yeah. her is pristine. She is professional. <laughs> really? She is an amazing what did you say person. To her? Just hello. <laughs> Well, I started with that. Yeah. We actually we were talking about uh, the, the Commonwealth. Uh, yeah, we were yeah. talking about uh, the fact that the Commonwealth heads of state were coming to Australia, Victoria, Melbourne. Uh, we were talking about some of the things that... I was the Agent General at the time uh, representing Victoria over there, so we were talking about our interests in the UK and Europe, and uh, she's a very on-the-ball person. Yeah. She's very well-informed. She's the very crown. interested in people. Oh, I've seen The Crown. So you, uh, we, I haven't what, watched The Crown. Oh, it's fantastic. You get the impression she's very engaged. What about The Prince? Was he there? Was Prince Philip there? Was Phil the Greek there? Or? Uh, I, I, I met <laughs> him many times. Really? Yeah, many times. Mm. Did you ever he call always him? had a good one did, yeah, always, seems, did you always. ever call him Phil the Greek or did you go with <laughs> uh, No, I, I did uh, address him properly. Uh, and did he always. did he talk about your fun bags or call you toots or anything as he's wont to uh, do? He had some classic lines. I remember uh, one event on a Thursday night and uh, he barrelled up and said, um, mm. uh, what brings you to a place like this? Uh, I remember being in a group of people including including a lady in a wheelchair and cool. he oh, looked and said, um, well, gosh, don't you have the best seat in the house? <laughs> uh, I Classic remember. Phil the Greek. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Phil completely is... entertaining. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I would love yeah. to meet him. Yeah. Sally yeah. Cap Moomba runs from March 11 to 14. Go to moomba.melbourne.vic.gov.au for all the info. Hey, as the Prince of Moomba... Can I get free parking for a year? <laughs> that is the most sought-after thing yeah. in the city oh, of Melbourne. That's a yes. Uh, yeah. but, you know. Sam and Brownie. Do you want to see what this looks like? Well, get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Over 100. Dave O'Neill in JB's chair. And we must... Yeah, yeah, we've got to check in because you know one of the great joys of seeing mm. you is just going through your gigs. You are a genuine road warrior. Do you know what I mean? You're not one of you know just fly on no. in for a couple of nights. I'm one of these the... TV pers- personalities like yourself. Whoa, <laughs> so, you know that that's the biggest insult you can. But that's fine. I'll let it go. Multiple networks. No, I know. In the old days, you couldn't do a show mate, on Seven Channel this Ten. It's not about mate, people. Listen, Kitty Flanagan, especially she loves she loves, she loves you going through your. Schedule, yeah, because they're gigs all you've done, gigs, gigs she rejected. <laughs> <laughs> what have you? What have you? What's the latest with Dave's diary? Here oh, we here go. We go. <sighs> Dave's diary. I I sort of confirmed. I mentioned the Hillsville RSL 102nd birthday gig, that I, which was originally a hundred years, and then it's because of the pandemic, it's oh, been stretched out to 102. Wait, oh. Sorry, have you done that? Or you no, doing that's it? on the 16th of July, and uh, the woman was wrapped that we mentioned it. So, yeah. Colette, I'm mentioning it again. I assume it's open to the public. Can I open for you? Is that just you? 16th of July. Yeah, come up and open oh, for oh, me. Can I open for you? Yeah. Well, what what day, day is six, that on? It's a Saturday night, 16th oh, of July. <laughs> Look out, Hills of RSL. We're selling about 100 second news. Be, be respectful. Don't do any of your diggers are no good routine. That's, no. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a taste of what you no. might r- no, roll you out wouldn't. on the night? You wouldn't do that. Oh, uh, at the RSL. I'll talk about my dad because yep. um, my dad was a veteran. Yep. He was in Vietnam last year on a Kentucky tour. And <laughs> <laughs> You He's sure like, we have... left a lot of good men behind. My dad, they're too pissed to get on the plane. <laughs> Even Jets, they have some don't, rules. Don't do it all <laughs> no, now. Do it all. People are going to be there. Dad volunteered for the Vietnam War in 1971. He, did, he volunteered when he had four boys under eight at home. Now I've got three kids. I'd go to Kabul tomorrow. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> what do you, don't do all it's your all my gear. Anyway, gear. I realised... You think I'd be I, welcome in that RSL, by the way? Oh, yeah, like, well, that's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> Next gig. Oh, oh. Next wow. gig. Uh, well, I didn't, I didn't get you updated with my Christmas gigs because often when it gets to December, that's when the really hairy yeah. ones turn up. And so because we're... We we're off air by... You guys were off air by then. I did five gigs in one day and th- two of them were for separate... I did two Zoom gigs... And then three live ones. What one at lunch was for a building? They're both for building companies. The, right. the live ones, warring and, building companies. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. They didn't know each other. But this one I did. I they said, "Oh, you've done this like years ago." 
at a lawn bowls club and you picked on young Jimmy. Remember young Jimmy? He was quite traumatised after it. Oh, really? But anyway, he said, but young Jimmy has is now the employee of the year. Oh, wow. And so we're going to give the award to young Jimmy, then we're going to bring you on as a surprise for him. And so... <laughs> Oh my Jim, God. But Jimmy seems as though he was scarred by the first meeting he, between you two. I think he was. Anyway, so young Jimmy wins the award, and I, they go, and, you know, here's Dave O'Neill. I remember him. He's like, oh, yeah, you picked on me. I went, how are you going, young Jimmy? And, uh, and the guy said before, don't pick on him again, though. I said, no, that's cool. And so anyway, I said, so Jimmy, how's it going? Uh, where, where are you living now? He goes, oh, you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it. I said, no, try me. He goes, I live in Glen Forbes. I said, I know where that is. That's in Phillip Island. I know that because it's a very small place because my kids' school camp is in Glen Forbes. Right. And I say this to the crowd, it's not Mr. funny. Mr. Melways. Mr. Melways. You're doing, you're doing a live version of Mr. Melways. Yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. And, uh, and, 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 you know, the crowd like, oh, yeah, whatever. And he goes, and Jimmy, Jimmy goes, yeah, I know, I know that school camp. And then I just pause and go, have I seen you hanging by the fence, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> You see the boss nodding his shaking his head. I'm told <laughs> him not to not pick on Jimmy. He's Jimmy. been traumatised again. By the way, he's just he's winning an award. Employee, Employee of, of the year. year. You rained anyway. on his parade. <laughs> then at night had to go into another building group and these guys were not builders, they were road workers. So that's a different level of... You know, rough, mm. tough. Yes. Rough, tough. Oh, they'd love you. Guys, I'd done it before and they love me, but this time it was in sort of a back room of a pub. It was noisy and I wasn't getting a lot of traction. And this young, <laughs> <laughs> and this young bloke in the mohawk stood up, yeah. big guy, and, and he walked towards the toilet and I went, hey, where are you going, mate? He goes, I'm going to where your rack's going at the moment. <laughs> Zinged. You got zinged by a by the guy in the mohawk. I can't believe how many. I can't believe how many of these uh, are repeat gigs that you've done it before. They've got you back. They've got me back because the first one went well, but then the second one doesn't go as well. Because yeah, you're out of stuff. Oh, no, and you so got right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a few of the times that people say you said that last time. I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. yeah, it was a funny joke. Anyway, I'll just, I'll just let you know. You said what, that last. You said that last time. time. I'll let you know what I've got coming up, and I saw this one in my diary, and I thought you might like it. It's the, um, I'm doing a gig on Wednesday, the 24th of March, for the annual Australian Nut Conference. The- <laughs> no, I, I, you're already writing puns now. You're, you're just going to go through nuts, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hope, oh, hey, no. you guys going to pay me in cashew tonight? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> that is good. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie, the podcast. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Nova 100. Our friend, Uncle Dave, Dave O'Neill. I'm is... not calling you Uncle Dave. Call him right. Uncle but... Dave. We're doing this now. How very day. Yes, those moments that someone has said something to you that's so deeply offensive. Often they don't realise it's offensive. Does Dave know how mm. this started, Swanee? You were at Mario's? Yes, I was at Mario's. Of Mario's, and, the restaurant. Uh, I've been there sort of every week with my friend Steph who's 10 years younger than me, and... Um, oh, no. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, we were talking... The, the waitress was talking about my skin colour because I picked up a lot of colour in the in the summer. You have. And she's like, oh, gosh, you're so... You, you've got such olive skin. And then she grabbed my friend's arm, who's Italian, and she said, oh, you've got a different skin tone to mum. Oh, oh how, how very dare you. Do. I don't know. It, st- it started from an early age with me, with people just... They underestimate you, I think, or they judge well, you they by should. the way you look. They yeah. should underestimate you. I mean, I was in a petrol station and I was filling out my car and this old lady said, when you finish there, I need $10 of super. I said, <laughs> I, don't, I don't work here, lady. <laughs> How very I don't, do not work here, lady. <laughs> um, I remember one time I was going to a gig in Mansfield and I turned up and a woman was like, oh, thank God you're here. I went, no, that's cool. I'm, I'm early. I'm on about nine. She goes, no, you're delivering the beer, aren't you? I went, I'm not the beer delivery guy. <laughs> oh, buddy, I'm dead. the headline comedian. A headline. Uh, headline. Headline. Headline, man. Feature actor, the Mansfield fundraiser. Um, and then, because oh, I'm big, uh, wasn't always fat, as oh, yeah, my partner big. reminds me. It wasn't fat when I met her. We're just Rubenesque. You know, yeah, Portly. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, um, I was I was in the supermarket aisle. Portly in Coles. It's not a good adjective. Portly, yeah, yeah, you don't want soft. Portly. Tubby, I prefer Tubby. Uh, I call you Uncle Tubby. <laughs> Uncle Tubby. <laughs> Uncle Tubby. Oh <laughs> yeah, when I go to prison. Oh, yeah, sure. You got to go visit Uncle Tubby. Um, anyway, so Uncle Tub Tub. Uh, Uncle Tubs. Leave the man alone. Phil Uncle Tubs. Exactly, mate. We love you. Anyway, so um, a beautiful, I was, thick man. I was in the. Ch- chocolate aisle and I was tr- I was having oh. a problem deciding 
And um, I wasn't blocking the aisle, but, you know, I'm a big man. I'm You're sitting, not that big. Yeah, I know. I was going like, you know, Chiquito, Cherry Ripe, oh, Picnic. Oh, I don't know what to get. And this woman <laughs> came past. And she said, don't you think you've had enough? How <laughs> very dead. <laughs> don't you think you've had oh, enough? Boy, come what on. is wrong with people? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's good to see oh. Mum. Hey. hey. Up. We want to know when you've been insulted uh, and exactly what was said. We're playing How Very Dare You. And we got prize. This is the Chrissy, Sam and Brownie podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Uncle Dave are on the radio. Mate, we're right. See the, uh, see the light? Oh. See the light there? You that know, means you're on. We're playing. You've done radio. Well, I do mainly podcasts these days, so I don't know. What? Shut up. Shut up. Shut, shut up. Up. Oh. How very day. When has someone said something to you so offensive that it's ripped the oxygen from your lungs and all you can say is how very day. What about, you're mainly a podcast now, aren't you? That's, uh, how that's, uh, very day. Which is why when we ever need you, you're very available, by the way, because yeah, your family's got to eat. Exactly. Kids Melinda, poor Kieran. Melinda Hello. from Cranbourne North. Melinda. Hello. Yours occurred on what was supposed to be the happiest day of your life. Oh, it was horrible. I was 23, I think I was, and excited because I was getting married, all that kind of thing, walking around at, like shops looking for wedding dresses, walked into one particular wedding dress shop with my, well, he's now my brother-in-law and his best friend, and this lady's come up to me and she goes, hello, can I help you? And I go, actually, you can. I'm looking for a wedding dress. And she's turned to me and she goes, oh, I'm sorry. We don't cater for girls your size. Oh. <sighs> That he did. <laughs> I respect that. <laughs> you respect that? No, that, it's a joke. He's I'm joking, Uncle Of course Dave. I'm joking. That used oh. to happen all the time. I, it's awful. Like, being a big girl, it's, yeah, it's, but anyway, look. It doesn't happen as much anymore because the, the more labels are size more inclusive. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, hey, you still married, though, Melinda? Sorry? Still married? No, I'm not, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately. It was, yeah, it, 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 it no. I'm... Look, uh, it was a while ago, Melinda. Yeah. What year did you get married? Twenty three is too young, Excellent. anyway. What, what year did you yeah. get married? Sorry. What, what year, year was it? Yeah. Nineteen ninety one. Oh, good year. Good year. Yeah. Melinda. Did it end really badly, Melinda? <laughs> uh no, 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 no. It didn't end badly. Um, it was just, it, it just wasn't going to work anymore. It was twenty three is young. Twenty three is young too. Yeah. It was nearly thirty years, so. Mm. You know, it, we, we, we gave it the good go, but no, and unfortunately he's passed now. So it's a success. Um, 30 years. Yeah. yeah. Well done. Nearly, nearly 30 years. Oh, well, mate, you can take a random to the movies. A Hoyt's recliner double pass. Extra comfy wow. recliners are just the beginning at Hoyt's Cinemas. Get on to Bumble, Melinda. Hoyt's.com.au. Get yourself uh, a movie date. Natasha, let's go. Hi. Hi. Well, um, when I was 34, I had my third child, mm. and I took her for a walk, and this lady came up with her granddaughter, and the little girl goes, oh, Bubby, Bubby. And the grandma goes, oh, yeah, that grandma's taken her little granddaughter for a walk off home. <laughs> How that is. And you, you, you love it. And you were in your oh, early 30s. Yes, and Jeez. I came home, looked in the mirror and nearly cried, thinking, oh, my God, do I look that old? How oh. very oh, that, would happen, that would happen to you a bit when you drop the kids we're, off. We're doing the kids. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Really? no. Oh, I look youthful, Sam. I'm youthful looking. He is. Uh, <laughs> I do see some of the dads at school drop off and go, oh, granddad's here, but there's not granddad. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough one. Tash gets a $200 makeout meal voucher. Makeout meals delivers meal kits with recipes from flash restaurants so like Mama Cedar. Yeah. Aaron, go. Hi. Um, I had my four-year-old cousin over at my house. And I was walking in front of him, and he goes, you've got small feet. And I thought that was a bit strange. And then he followed up with, and a fat bum. <laughs> oh, how very dare you. How very dare you. Four year olds. <laughs> bit too honest. Cousins aren't really a, you know. Is it, is it important to have a good relationship, necessarily? <laughs> with your cousin? Yeah. Not really. <laughs> and I'm, nev- oh, I'm never speaking to him again. No, no stuff him. Good. He's dead to you. I wonder Laura why. Laura from Craigieburn, Mate, Laura. I've got to give Aaron something. Double past the Melbourne Fashion Festival. How good. It's the PayPal Melbourne Fashion Festival. Celebrating fashion, arts and ideas. Tickets at paypal.mff.com.au. There's a lot of weight ones. A lot of, uh, mm. hey, you big. Always. 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 <laughs> that is like a rite of passage for any woman because people think that they can comment on your body. Oh. 
Newsflash. <laughs> I remember. You can't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Don't I wouldn't. do I wouldn't. it. I've just remembered the one that this this all this will only means uh, something to people who followed cricket in the 1980s. But I remember I was at a my oh. family um, Christmas mm. and we end up in the um, at my uncle's place. We end up in the pool and. Um, you know, I had like lunch and dinner, mm. and then one of my cousins said, "Hey, Arjuna Ranatunga, go get me another beer." How <laughs> very dare! Arjuna Ranatunga was a heavy, heavy set boy cricketer, yeah. and, um, <laughs> and we my get nickname, it. My we nickname get it, for a year was Arjuna. So anyway, really, were you a heavy set boy at some oh, stages big, in your life? Big really? Lunch. Oh yeah, tubby. Oh, I remember, but and family are often the worst at it. I yeah. remember my old uncle Joe. I, I'd only see him every few years in Queensland. Literally every time I'd see him, he'd go. Are you Pat's daughter? And I go, yeah, he goes, <laughs> and he go, geez, you're a big girl. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. And I'm, thanks like, I'm like, thanks a lot. How are you, whoa, are, you Pat's, are you Pat's daughter? Pat's daughter. Jeez, you're no, a no, I'm not. Big. Thanks a lot, Uncle Joe. Girl. Anyway, he's passed now. Laura from Craigie Burns. <laughs> who's Laura, laughing now? Who's exactly. laughing exactly. now? Uh, Laura, <laughs> hi, Laura. Hi, how are you all? Are you Pat's Good. youngest? <laughs> Jeez, you're a big girl. <laughs> I like that voice a lot. I yeah. like that voice um, a lot. What happened? Yeah, I was um, I was 48, living in Darwin and working in an office full of um, young females and a couple of older ones, and one of them was an Avon representative. Anyway, oh. she had all these beautiful free samples. Ding and she dong. goes, here, here's some free samples for you, and they're anti-aging cream. Ah, uh, what? <laughs> oh, Laura. Jeez. And yeah. what did you want oh, to no. say to her? What, what did you want to say to her? <laughs> I won't say what I wanted to say. How, <laughs> how, how very, very dare you. <laughs> how about, very dare you. Do you reckon you're about 10 <laughs> seconds late on that, Dana? I felt a bit off that <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah. It felt like when when Laura says <laughs> there are anti-ageing. How there you go. very dare you. I've done two to make up for it. Yes, do you want to give her a prize? Yes. <laughs> we'll do it. All right. Some anti-ageing cream. Uh, some <laughs> Avon. $200 makeout meals voucher. Makeout meals delivers meal kits with recipes by top restaurants. Oh, like, that's lovely. Thank you you love so Avon, much. though. My mum used to get the catalogue and the woman would come it. over. I used to love it. Are you, are you Joyce's youngest? No, you're, you're a big boy. You're a big boy. <laughs> Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Oh, Mr. Fuji's here. How about some tropical stuff? I got some tropical stuff just to give people a sense of the day. Uh, day sure. Neil and What's happening? Swan. Well, Peter Hitchener and Fifi Box have been crowned as Melbourne's Mooba Monarchs. Peter Hitchener will be Wonderful soon. choice. We haven't been able to get Fifi, apparently. She's, she's uh, busy. She's busy at the moment. Yeah. Of course, Fifi's on another radio station, but we're all she adults sure here. Is. And we, we just acknowledge the new Queen of Melbourne. You were the Queen, Swanee. I to was. Fifi. I texted her yesterday. I go, I know that we've had children, but is today the best day of your <laughs> life? <laughs> Peter Hitchener, of course, uh, will be in your... The, you're his son, so you're effectively the prince of Melbourne. Yes, I am. And I will rule with fairness and a big heart. Sally anyway. Cap, the Lord Mayor, was in earlier, and I think that you are an absolute chance to be sitting cross-legged in a royal costume on yes. the float. On a mat. I, I absolutely got that impression. Yeah. Did anyone else? For the there? corgi. It's either going to be on a float or just in a cell by yourself. I'll it's take like it. Cap wasn't all in, by the way, on that. I, I don't feel think. like she was. I think so, yeah. too. Yeah, Hitchner might get all weird and keep you in a cell because yeah. you're a threat. Hitchy would never do that. Speaking of the bit, speaking of which, um, <laughs> Hitchy would never do that. Hitchy was, uh, Hitchy was involved in a little, uh, you know, a, a, not one of the greats, but just a, still a gentle change of pace that should be acknowledged last night. Billy shows the boys how it's done. That's all coming up a little later on in sport, Pete, and we are going to see that crown later, aren't we? Uh, I guess so. Yes. <laughs> Stand by. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> He's very funny, that man. Next in Melbourne's Nine News, a titanic drug problem in Women's <laughs> Town with cannabis growing in an abandoned theatre restaurant. Fantastic. Titanic drug problem. Yeah. Absolutely. And that is a great story, the What's titanic happened? drug oh, well, problem. Well, in Williamstown, the can- a can- cannabis plants have been found inside the titanic restaurant on Nelson Street. I don't know. Nelson, Nelson Parade. Street. Yeah, yeah, it's Nelson in Williamstown. Parade. So Main they, Street. They have uh, a hall. What's a hall? Have cannabis, cannabis plants have been found and ripped out from inside an abandoned, abandoned iconic theatre restaurant in Williamstown. Are you okay today, Dino? Yeah, I'm all right. A bit flat. <laughs> what was the? What, oh, the so scheme's was, gone down. What, what happened? Did the uh, t- did Titanic have a theatre restaurant? Mate, and, and then it, what? Well, you haven't heard about Don't it. You know about it. Pang. It's come up before, but I didn't know it was. So the captain comes out and interacts with you. This they is, have water on the floor. He said it was a, it was abandoned though. Does it not? I think COVID gone. got it. Oh, yeah. no, I don't know oh. why because last week I was there. I was driving down Nelson Parade. Yeah. Nelson Place, sorry. Yeah. And um, I saw it, and there were people outside 
it looked like they were eating. Like, it looked like it was over. Yeah, Had you been, you been there, Dana? Mate, me and all my mates went. It was the greatest night of our lives. At the very end, I won't tell you what, because it might come back. Maybe. A giant something appears outside on hydraulics, yeah. so it just reveals itself. On That's the window. That's why the window. Yes. I'm sorry, but I have to say <laughs> it's the Statue of Liberty. Yes, it is. The Statue of Liberty. Yeah. You look out the window and the Statue of Liberty is like... At the end of the at the end of the night, do, yeah. do, do women and children leave first? <laughs> yes, they do. Okay. Yes, they um, do. That's incredible. So they, God, I hope my heroine's okay in hunchbacks. <laughs> I better check on all if the way home. Mind. How late was that? Yeah, it was late. But if you don't mind, I've written some Titanic uh, weed base puns. Well, I'll just give, hold on, I'll just yeah, give you the. Has the, anyone called witches in britches today? And I just know. to check what's going on the, the status, co- just, the coke status. I'll just yeah. give all the information, and then you can do <laughs> yeah. this stuff. A collection of more than two hundred plants were uncovered. Williamstown Police Sergeant Glenn Close. What? Obviously the oh, acting cool. works dried up. Oh, my God, bunny boiler. Now, Glenny, Glenny, Glenn <laughs> Close is now a Williamstown Police Sergeant. Uh, officers were alerted to the plants after a real estate agent visited the Titanic restaurant uh, on Tuesday. Oh, what a dobber. Yeah, I know. Mate, there was a hydroponic setup. Rats. <laughs> <laughs> is that all you need to know? Yeah, roughly. And now what have you prepared? <laughs> you know, in first class, the bongs are made of crystal. In the lower deck, they were made of Gatorade bottles. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that yeah. ship struck an iceberg because the watchman thought it was a 7-Eleven? Come on! <laughs> iceberg? Did it's you know ice. so great. Slurpee, dead ahead. <laughs> you boom, dude, by the way, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Yeah, yeah, Thank you, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> your boom tish sound effect is really on the money now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The ship <sighs> struck an iceberg because the watchmen were having a DNM with a seagull. Come on! Uh, <laughs> mm, yes. I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta check my stash at Looney Bin. <laughs> so. The problem was the captain had had that many edibles. He made a cubby house using all the lifeboats. Come on! No, yeah, that's a, that's I like a, it. I think that's actually just slander. Uh, I, uh, I loved that. I could listen to that all day. Who cares? <laughs> hey, this is uh, it's just a change of pace. The, yeah. the, you know, um, swimmer, yeah. a swimmer, and in Sydney, a. Sydney's first uh, fatal shark attack in, ta- attack in almost 60 years. Yeah, Terrible. That's a change of pace for you. Terrible. Exactly. Uh, so that, that's, uh, I'd like, as, as in the words of Brian Mannix, when are, when are we going to start fighting back? <laughs> that's all I'd say about these sharks. Said. <laughs> he said that. That's what he said. Hey, Kylie Minogue went out. Is he talking out. about fighting back against sharks, sharks or yeah. fighting back against stairs? Bro, bro, sharks. Remember no, he had two accidents in as many weeks. Yeah, no, the second one was One where sharks. he face-planted some steps. And then also he got attacked by a shark. The second one was about, that's when he said, when are we going to fight? start firing right. back? Mate, go to the fish and chip shop and buy some flake. Exactly. That's how you can all, you just... <laughs> the you only can, way you can get the sharks. Your, you can do your bit. <laughs> I'll do my bit every Hey, Kylie, week. you know Kylie Minogue is back, back in town. Yeah, she's bought a she, big house here. Canterbury? Yeah. Remember she owned a lot of properties in Canterbury. She still does, I believe. Well, she mm. went and saw... Mailing mm, Road, mate. Owns, mo- owns Mailing Road. Go on. Mo- <laughs> Kylie Minogue went and saw Moulin Rouge on Tuesday night. Oh. There you go. Apparently that's news. She's Wasn't she in the original movie? In Moulin Rouge? No. Oh, God. Uh, no, that okay. was Nicole Kidman. And okay, Ewan McGregor. All right, I'm getting it mixed up with the uh, that other she one she was in. She played a little... Oh, the del- the del- she, played a Gardner. she played a little nymphy fairy Yeah, she did. She played the green fairy, yeah. Uh, apologies. Yeah. Oh, he's bloody oh, stead. Oh, come Alice on. Alice Synth. Oh, Margaret Nova, Stratton over here. Nova's lowest lane, can't you? It's not Margaret Stratton. It's <laughs> Margaret Pomerantz or David Stratton. That's right. Put them together. Margaret. Yeah, I knew she was in Buddy Moulin Rouge. Yeah. Didn't ask, don't care. <laughs> oh, sorry, I should have kept reading. Kylie made a cameo as the playful and seductive green fairy in Baz Luhrmann's epic Moulin Rouge. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Apology accepted. <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. And oh my God. Come on, baby, the smile is bright. He's on Channel 9 and 69. Hit your nose. Yes, he is. This goes for a while, doesn't it? Let him breathe. Longest jingle. Can I tell you, you've changed already. You've oh, come in mm. here. You've got an air of pomp and circumstance and about I'm you because you are the king of Moomba. Oh, thank you very much. But I left the crown at home. No. I, know, I just thought, is it a bit over the top? Is it too ostentatious? Hitching. It's only slightly bigger than this room. I could have just squeezed it <laughs> in. <laughs> I have been wanting you to be the king of Moomba since Chrissy, I was, you. you know, the, the monarch because I could not believe that you yeah. <laughs> had you. never been 
had been asked to do it. I can't well, believe I it. Was, I was most honoured when it happened, and thank you, and thanks for your kind words on air yesterday morning, and I was very thrilled about that as well. Yes, because yeah. I said yesterday, you I was like, Mr Chrissy. I said, it's got to be Peter Mr. Hitchner. Chrissy. It's got to be. Did you have a little yeah. inside word? I didn't, No. But I literally can't think of anyone else more oh, suitable. Well, well, Craig McLaughlin. <laughs> yeah, there you anyway, go. Could have been. Anyway, ben ben uh, Robert so, Smith. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, so the thing is, when I... <laughs> tell, you what, the, tell you what, the kids are behaving themselves exactly, in that parade. Exactly, they would too. Good old Ben. <laughs> ben is the king. Anyway, when I uh, got the call during a news break from my boss that yeah. this was happening, I, th- I just thought of the great people of the past who had been monarchs. I thought of Chrissy. I thought of Lou Richards. Did Kevin, you? Kevin Did Bartlett. You? Yes, it's funny, it's funny. It's funny you say that that's who you thought of because mm. when you were asked about it, let's see who you mentioned. I immediately thought of people like Lou Richards and Bert, who'd been Moomba monarchs in the past, and uh, just reminded me how important this festival is to Melbourne. So, so that, however, was on the... Uh, but when I'm standing right beside somebody from another breakfast uh, radio program, and so... You're allowed to... Your beautiful fine. queen, Fifi Box, Fifi Fiona Box. Box. Fabulous, yes, but, you know... Anyway, now we've got it. You know, I, I, I love, it. I love it. You're so old school. You don't like to mention Channel Seven and Peter Mitchell, and you don't like to mention Fifi Box and Fox. If you don't like to mention the, well, I love them all. School, I love everybody, and yeah, you know you we do. have to. But, but you know, I don't want to sort of. <laughs> You're a man. Everybody loves you. I think you might need In to be. Doses. I think you might need to be the king next year too. Oh no! What? No. A rain. Yes. <laughs> Now, Hitch, the first Chrissy. thing I thought of when I heard that you were the king of Moonbum. Scraping yes. the bottom of the barrel? Was that the phrase that came to mind? No, I didn't. I thought about bloody time. Oh, then you. I realised that your son Dino. is Dino. the official prince he of Moonbum. He really is. Uh-oh. Yes, he is. Now, we've there had um, the Honourable Sally Cap in this morning, and I yes. floated the idea with her yep. that as your son... Exactly. Um, that Let's, he should be on the float, on the sitting float. cross-legged. Yes. Yep. And, what, and she said family are welcome. There you go. Hitchy, <laughs> get a red velvet rug, make it look all regal, yes. and I'll come and on And I'll the float. be there. Yeah. Could, yeah. could we do like a recreation of a royal baby portrait, like you with nothing oh, on but a nappy? Yes. And a silver rattle. That's a bit Fox FM, but and, I'm in. Okay, sure. And just keep yourself nice. Don't Prince Andrew it up before... The big parade, mate. You've well, got a few I, weeks to go. I don't sweat, you see, yeah. because of war-related. Uh, oh, hey, Hitchy, this is this is a very controversial show. Yeah, so right. More, you're more than you're usual. Doing, you know, you're doing I'm, your, I'm just thinking of three traps. We've just you're doing kind of your normal, yeah, yeah, your normal thing where you distance yourself from the chaos going on. Yeah, so you'll yes. never you'll never be implicated in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're oh, a guest. Hitchy, thank you. There's a good chance I'll be on the flute with you. Oh, it sounds fabulous. We were thinking of taking uh, a rescue dog, but I think it's <laughs> same thing. Dino is the equivalent of your rescue. <laughs> He's dog. a comfort same dog. <laughs> um, what about any official, comfort dog? Well, comfort what, dog. Official, he is my comfort dog. When is it? March. Well, thank you. It's in March. Well, well, the, March the 11th to the 14th. So COVID it, safe event. Good. Well, I'm sure the Lord Mayor told you that already this morning. And uh, we want everyone to come along and just let let the world know Melbourne is back. Did you yes. have to report Moomba it? Like, did you have to report it last night? Did you say, "Oh, the King and Queen I, of Moomba has been announced," I, and it's, it's me? me. Yes. Did you, what did you? I, I, well, I had to actually. <laughs> it felt very, very much like a conflict. But I thought, "Oh, just this once." <laughs> and at the end, I did cry myself, Napoleon style. Oh, I love it. <laughs> you wow. have to no, do these things. Napoleon. Yeah. But well, what, what he, if you abdicate Prince Edward style? Then will Tony Jones have to step in, or what happens? <laughs> we're, we're back to controversy again. What is that? All good. What sort of official duties do you have to do in the next few weeks? Well, Chrissy will tell you exactly. And Chrissy did it so well that I'm just not sure that I'll be able to, you know, match what she did. But you have to Off go with and, his head! <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, no, I didn't do that. I've just got to go and, and, you know, catch up with people, bore the hell out of them and move to the next lot and yes. just say, thanks for coming. And then we've got the motorcade, or I'd like to think of it as a procession, yes. through the city streets. And um, That's great that that's back. You'll love that. I it's think a, that's It's great. a very incredibly moving moment, actually. Yeah. For somebody mm. that loves this city like we do, it's yes. a really big deal. It that's felt exciting. really good. That's what I thought yeah. about it as and well. And then there's the Melbourne's Birdman gorgeous. Rally as well. That's right. Oh, now, yeah. normally, uh, m- my king was Jimmy Giggle, the great Jimmy, yes, Jimmy Giggle, and he was the first monarch to uh, actually and participate mm. in 
the Birdman Rally, the yes. first king to actually do it. To do it. Are you going to do it this year? Look, I thought long and hard about it and uh, the answer came back <laughs> under no circumstances, but thanks anyway. Have you thought um, about someone that could do it in your stead? Well, I... Well, mm. Oh, there he is yeah. right now. I, I, think you, I, I don't care that I'll get hepatitis from that water. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm doing it. There's antibiotics, you I think, know that. I think you mentioned motorcade. I think if you don't include Dino, he has an apartment in the city. There could be a Lee Harvey Oswald type <laughs> <in> <laughs> Controversy number five or six. That is so true. <laughs> magic, forget about magic bullets, magic mushrooms going through the air. Oh, <laughs> so, no, anyway, all good. Oh, Don't you're so funny, you lot. Well done. Thank you very much, it's Sam. You. I was oh, yeah. expecting. Look, I was so expecting. Thrilled. I don't know from. I just thought from Some our friend here. I thought Zinger, uh, yeah, Zinger right. coming, but I'm a no. staunch monarchist, so I was, I was very respectful. <laughs> well, you're very and, wonderful. Um, Thank you, Sam. Well, I don't think you'll make it to March 11. Your phone's right. ringing, or is it an alarm saying the show's over now? It was an alarm. <laughs> it's nine o'clock. Saying there's an alien show on Channel Nine, but that was nine p.m. last night. Oh dear! <laughs> so, oh, you missed 24 hours or 12 hours. Yeah, man. Unlike no, you, Dina, you're down from 24. That's great. Itchy, mm. Can you put me in touch with Liz Hayes? We'll talk off the radio. That is a good idea. Hey, congratulations! Thank you, kids. Lovely seeing you're you. You're wonderful. We Thanks, love you, Chrissy. Dave. Take care. Dave. Thank you also for. Oh yeah, in oh, for we'll Brownie. be here tomorrow. So will morning. you be back in soon? No, next, I next please Thursday. do. Yeah, yeah, I'll miss I'll, you. I'll, I'll return. Can I meet you for some chicken and chips in Clifton Hill soon? Yeah, definitely. I just want to finish with one of the because yesterday we did things we learned from Dave. Yeah, I just want to. Give It'll everyone be some behind the scenes yeah, content. Sure. Stick around for this. Oh, I want it. I wouldn't Relax, have Pete. In the office, he uh, Dave said to me, mm. I wrote it down, Swanee. I once had to follow. We were talking about Kevin Bartlett mm. yeah. and how great he was on. You know, oh, he's very a funny. brilliant, brilliant. A mover, the quote was the quote was from Dave. I once had to follow Kevin Bartlett at the Altona Hockey Club. It wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> Show will be back tomorrow. Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. Oh, unless it's a weekend. Here's a 100.